So in our last episode, we looked at basic math operators and learned how to use them in both Python and Excel. We also got to touch on some important computer science concepts that we'll continue to see throughout all of these lessons. In this episode of Data Dorks, we're going to check out a very special type of value that we store in our variables, called Booleans. We also take another trip back to math class to see how these values, along with expressions, are an insanely powerful concept in Excel and in Python. So up to this point, we've primarily seen our variables hold either numbers or characters. Let's look at another type of data that variables can hold called Boolean values. It's kind of a crazy name for what it actually is, but shout out to my data dude, George Bull, and the 1800s where it came from. What are Boolean values? It's just simply true and false. There are probably times that you wished all things would resolve down to just true or false outside of the computer. Let's start by exploring this in Excel. You might not know this even as an avid Excel user, but true and false are actually built in Excel functions. You could probably pretty easily guess what their result is when you press enter. Now you are likely thinking why in the world would Microsoft invest time in building something called true or false that just gives you back true or false. That would be like me going to a vending machine for a Mountain Dew giving it a dollar, and then it just dropping someone else's dollar in the tray instead of the bottle. However, for us as data dorks, Boolean values are more than just the words of true or false. They represent a logical fork in the road that we are then able to utilize in our program. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I loved the books where you could choose your own adventure. If you weren't as nerdy as me to look forward to your school's monthly book fair, I totally understand. But I love these books. And I love them because the whole premise was that you as the reader would be presented with decisions for the main character in the story. If you wanted him or her to go slay a dragon, you would turn to page 52. Or if you wanted them to instead go into an unexplored tomb, you would turn to page 88. This decision branching is very similar to the way data devs use these Boolean true and false values to talk to computers. There is some type of logical test or expression that can be either true or false. If the result is true, one thing can happen. And if it is false, something different or even the same thing can happen. We see this all the time, but may have never thought this explicitly about it. It's kind of like if I go up to a bartender and order a drink. The bartender then checks my ID. If me being over 21 is true, then I can get a beer. But if I'm not old enough, it's false, and I will hopefully at least get my Mountain Dew this time. Let's focus in on the idea of determining programmatically if I am over 21 for a second. In the same way that there are arithmetic operators to do simple math, like we saw in the last video, there are comparison operators to determine whether an expression evaluates to true or false. We have another helpful table to show the different comparison operators that are in Excel. The first comparison operator we will check out is the equal to operator denoted by the equal sign. Say we want to compare whether five equals five, which of course is a true statement, but a false statement would be for me to say that any other number was equal to five. In our case, no matter how much I like the number four, it will never be five. The next four operators we will look at compare whether one number is larger or smaller than another. These symbols are known as greater than or less than. One thing I wanna make sure is clear is that greater than and less than operators are relative to the location of the numbers not always pointing to the left or right, like this table shows. So this is true regardless. I don't know about you, but I was always taught to think of these operators like Pac-Man. It always wants to eat the larger of the two numbers. So five is greater than one, but five is not greater than 10. Same thing with the less than operator. It is a true statement to say five is less than 10, but what if I said something like five is greater than 10? That would be a false statement. Now what if we asked a question like this? Is five greater than five? 
five is not greater than or less than five, so anytime the two numbers you are comparing are equal, you will get a false result. However, as data dorks, sometimes we want a true result if the number is equal. So we have greater than and less than operators that let us still get a true result even if the numbers are equal. So if we add an equal sign on the end, this is now a true statement. Also, it still works in the same way if we ask if five is greater than or equal to 10. That still is not a true statement. This also works with less than operator. Our last operator is the not equal to sign, which is just denoted in Excel by typing both comparison operators. As you might imagine, this returns true if something is not equal and false if they are equal. Let's jump into Python and do the exact same thing we did in Excel. So if we wanted to know if five equal five, we would type this. One thing that confuses all new data dorks working with Python is that equal to is two equal signs, not one. As we saw in our variables lesson, a single equal sign assigns to a variable. So we can't use it to check for equality. So instead we use two equal signs. The greater than, less than, and the less than are equal to, and greater than are equal to, work the same way in Python as they did in our Excel workbook. One thing that is different between Python and Excel is the not equal to operator. As we saw in Excel, we denote this with both the greater than and less than sign. In Python, instead, we represent comparing something that is not equal with the exclamation followed by the equal sign. So now you have your next party conversation, Booleans! We looked at the comparison operators that give a result that is a Boolean value. In our next episode of Data Dorks, we're going to look at working with more than one of these expressions and their Boolean results.